private sector comes to nuclear. The prospects of India's private sector getting into nuclear power are bright again. This is presently not allowed by law, but has been spoken of many times over the years. The government has now said it will amend the Atomic Energy Act and the Civil Liability on Nuclear Damage Act. It has also set targets for building small and modular nuclear reactors as announced in the Union Budget on 1st February. In many countries, including the United States, the private sector is actually the key driver of nuclear power production. India has also set a target of 100 gigawatts, 1 gigawatt is 1000 megawatt of nuclear power by 2047. But there is an interesting history to how this played out and the geopolitics involved in nuclear power. I asked Indrani Bakshi, who just joined us, to also explain the history and what happened behind the scenes in India's efforts to build India's own private nuclear capacity. Actually, that was literally the most interesting announcement in the budget, to be fair. Certainly for people like me, because, you know, we signed the India-US nuclear deal in 2006. India got a unique waiver for nuclear commerce from the nuclear suppliers group in September of 2008. Then we go ahead and bring into effect an absolutely self-destructive act called the Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act in 2010. This act was so poorly drafted. And at the time, it was not just dra poorly drafted by the Congress party. Frankly, the BJP played a huge role structuring the act in such a way that you would never have industry participation in the nuclear sector. It was why we would do that to ourselves. I mean, we can go on, but that's a different matter. By 2015, it had become very clear that Indian industry that had been part of the nuclear manufacturing sector in India, which its companies like LNT, and Nagar, etc., BHEL, BEL, all of these, none of them wanted to be a supplier to the NPCIL making nuclear reactors. So that literally took away five years out of our there. We asked for Arriva, the French company, to build six nuclear reactors in Jaitapur in Maharashtra. We asked Westinghouse to build six nuclear reactors in Andhra Pradesh and Hitachi to build six nuclear reactors in Gujarat. Both Hitachi and uh, Westinghouse walked away. Arriva is still there, but only in name. None of them want to build a single reactor because of these two clauses in the Nuclear Act. By 2015, the current foreign minister was then the foreign secretary. They put out a set of FAQs, which redesignated the supplier. Now, the killer article, if you will, in the act was an article called 17C that said that suppliers, that the operator who had primary liability for nuclear damage, had to compensate for nuclear damage, had recourse to a suppliers, to pass liability on to suppliers, which, if you can imagine, nuclear damage would be in the hundreds of billions. So no supplier in the world can actually take on that kind of liability. And it is also against India's own international obligations because it is against India international law or all the conventions on civil nuclear damage. Nobody came in. As you see, we are in 2025. Not a single reactor from overseas has been in India. Cut to 2023, 22, we have a world that is now experimenting with small modular reactors. India is building its own reactors, but it cannot cooperate, collaborate with anybody without amending this particular CLNDA Act. So this amendment comes at a time when the government has figured out that every other course of action is no longer possible. Finally, we've reached a point where we are turning the page, so to speak. Is First to do, we are literally the last to do the right. There is an American-US angle to this as well. The last visit that Jake Sullivan made to India, which is on, I think, the 6th of January, he and the US announced that they would take three Indian nuclear entities like BARC, etc. off their entities list. So the restrictions that they had imposed on Indian nuclear entities was gone. If we didn't take up on that offer by amending the liability law, we would have been 
truly stupid. Indani, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Govind.